Looks for Miguel Almiron. Maybe another goal of the season contender from Almiron. Going for that finesse shot. Oh my god. I literally called it Miguel Almiron. St. Maximin is making that run if he can get there. He can. St. Maximin, good spot. Goes for goal. Oh my god. St. Maximin. In today's episode, there's a very good chance we end up breaking our transfer record in this Newcastle career mode series. So it is going to be a big episode. Last episode, we kicked off season three with a bit of transfer business, completing the signing of Nuno Tavares and Wesley Fofana. Also, we did start the Premier League season with a win, which is awesome. And we beat Liverpool in the Community Shield final yet again. Today's episode, we're looking to improve the team even more. As you guys would have seen, we've got the money to make a mega signing. And that's what I'm looking to do, improving that right side and potentially even that defense that's the plan season three is in full flow with newcastle and if you guys are enjoying the series keep the support coming in by dropping a like on the video subscribe if you're new around here and let's kick things off rest conference to start the episode first one is about buendia a player we sold to marseille in the last episode buendia has really let us down we thought he would be an insane player but he proved us wrong this is one of the first signings i feel like which has kind of been a failure because if you look at his stats from when he joined Newcastle to now, it's just been really, really underwhelming and selling him was the only option. I think we did make a small profit on him, but yeah, it's kind of disappointing that Buendia couldn't really reach his potential here at Newcastle, but hopefully at Marseille he'll regain his form and do well, but it's unfortunate that Buendia has let us down, but of course... Joe Willock takes that spot and he is just not looking back. So there's a positive about that. Next up, did you realize that your objective for the season is to reach the Champions League final? Yep, I just saw that and I had a good laugh because expecting Newcastle to reach the final in our first season in this competition in this series is, is just way too much. But thankfully, it's on low priority, so I don't think it'll affect us all that much. But um, my goal for the Champions League this season is to make it to maybe the quarterfinals. I feel like that is a fair place to, you know try and aim at so that is my goal but the final is asking way too much next up sign Ferran Torres because he can play in any position in the midfield he's very young and has got 90 potential honestly this might be the player we look at because I want an upgrade for Almiron I know he had a good last episode but overall I feel getting a better player on that right side could be invaluable for us this season and Ferran Torres might just be the pick of the bunch great potential he's got the Premier League experience playing for Man City Four star skills, four star weak foot. He's got the pace as well. He might be the perfect pickup, guys. And because he's right footed and we'll be playing him on the right side, it might really benefit Tammy Abraham in terms of getting crosses in the box. And that might be a big factor in bringing the Spaniard to Newcastle. We're going to have to scout him because I'm not entirely sure how much he's going to be worth. By the looks of things, because he's playing at City, this might prove to be the most expensive signing we've ever made. So we're going to have to be patient about this one. Scout him and get to know him more but of course we do have money this season and i've promised you guys we're going to be making a mega signing and this might just be it we're gonna to have to be patient though with that press conference done it was another episode where joe willock really shined he was superb in the premier league against brighton a goal and an assist in the same game and that's why he picks up the first player of the episode award of the season okay so talking about transfers as you guys know the only two positions i'm looking to improve upon in this window is bringing in a right winger and of course a center back because fabian shah is getting old fafana is our only other center back we might need some more depth in that position so what i'm thinking guys first we'll focus on the ferran torres signing and see how much that's going to cost us and with the remaining money i guess we invest that into a center back that is what my plans are just for now we'll see how things go okay we've got a couple of offers for isaac hayden and i'm actually open to selling him guys because let's be real we've got the two longstaff brothers to be back up in midfield we've got calvin phillips and toliso do we even need isaac hayden with the cash and the extra wages i think that could be way more beneficial to us so i'm gonna negotiate with her the berlin and try and get more money but i think selling hayden might be the right play i'm gonna counter with 14 and a half million for isaac hayden just to see what they're willing to pay i think 12.3 is the most they're willing to go up to let's counter with maybe 13 and a half just to see we can get maybe an extra million for isaac hayden Nope, I don't think we can. I'm just going to accept it then. I'll take the cash. This might be the money we need to, of course, sign a centre-back after Ferran Torres potentially joins Newcastle. I think we've got enough data about Ferran Torres to now make a move. We don't know his exact overall, but 
we do know he's valued at 47 million i expect him to be like 82 83 rated i think at this point only 22 so his overall is gonna shoot up as soon as we sign him and start using him his wages though are super expensive but I think he's a player that can help take this team to the next level. He'll bring a lot of creativity to our width and wings. And I think, yeah, Ferran Torres to Newcastle United would just be an unbelievable signing. The only question is, can we pull it off? 47 million is what he's valued at. Let's see. Let's approach to buy and see what happens. We're going to have to negotiate with Pep Guardiola for this one. So I'm going to start with his valuation, 47 million. If we can get him for that, this is one of the best transfers I guess we'll be doing in this series, hands down. So, we're already breaking our transfer record with this signing. 47 million. You know what? 58.9 million with the sell-on clause. Fair enough. I'm going to counter with 52. The more money we can save on this, the more money we'll potentially have for a centre-back signing as well. So, 52 million. And they're willing to work with that. Let's go. That's all we're paying for Ferran Torres. A sell-on clause is in there, but... As I said, I don't really anticipate on selling him, so that's fine. Ferran Torres, now time for the contract stuff. He wants a crucial squad role, I'm not surprised at all. I'm very keen to find out what his overall is looking like, so that'll be fun. We'll give him a five-year deal as long as possible. Hopefully no release clause is well perfect, he doesn't want one. That makes things a lot easier. In terms of contract, he's taking a massive wage cut, which helps in our favour. We'll remove the gold bonus, submit offer, and well, that's gonna work. Brilliant, 91,000 is all he's asking. Ferran Torres to Newcastle United is a done deal. That might be the easiest transfer negotiations I've ever done. What a signing. We might have just signed the next big thing in football, guys. Ferran Torres is a Newcastle United player, 52 million. As I said, he's 83 rated. He's valued at 52 million. 93 acceleration, 86 sprint speed. The finishing's there, the passing is there. He's gonna add so much to our team. The best part about that is, guys, we've got still 30 million left to sign a defender. And with Isaac Hayden potentially being sold soon, we'll have about 40 million for a defender, and that is huge. So, yo, we could be making a solid centre back signing as well in this episode. For now, though, it's time for our first home Premier League game of the season as we take on Everton. Should be a tricky outing, but it's gonna be the game where Ferran Torres makes his debut, so I'm excited. Okay, maybe not. We might have to wait until we see Ferran Torres in action. His stamina is super low, maybe because he just played for City. That's a real bummer. But anyways, we'll have Almir on starting this one. So I guess we're gonna have to wait until the next game to see Ferran Torres in action. That's our team for now. Newcastle versus Everton. Let's make it two wins out of two in the Premier League. First home game of the season as well. We need to deliver. There we go. Tolisso opening up a bit of space. Looks for Miguel Almiron. Now he's got a lot of competition this season. So let's hope he can take that as inspiration and really perform well for us. His goal in that last episode against, of course, Liverpool was superb. Let's hope he can build on that. Tolisso tries to pick out um, Almiron there, but it didn't really work. But we're looking good going forward, which... Is a good sign. Long spell of possession for Everton here as it's Gabamon looking to bring it forward. Looks for Richarlison and he's one player you do not want to mess with. Jules Conde with the interception and we're just going to clear it away that way. And we actually played out from the back really well and that could result in something. As here's Joe Willock on the charge. I see St. Maximin making a good run. I'm going to play it to him. Brilliant ball for St. Maximin. Maybe a cross for Tammy Abraham. That was the worst delivery ever. I was trying to find Tammy Abraham, not Almiron. Halftime against Everton. It's been a very difficult game because chances not coming through for any team. I don't know what's going on here. It's been a very, very um, cagey affair. Let's see what the second half brings. Oh, Tammy Abraham wins that. Looks to find Joe Willock. Can he get there? He can and he scoops the keeper again. He did that in the last episode as well. This has been a game where chances just haven't come by. So a moment like this is absolutely vital and potentially Newcastle winning the title down the line because this is huge. In a game where we've barely had any shots, out of nowhere we get a bit of luck as Abraham wins that. He squares this one for Joe Willock and look at how easy he made that look. It's audacious from Joe Willock. The two goals he scored in the Prem this season, both cheeky chips from Willock. Unbelievable, man. The talent he's got. I have no regrets selling Buendia because if that means Willock plays every single game this season, well, it works perfectly fine for us. 1-0 up against Everton in a game where chances haven't come by. Let's now defend and get the three points. Clever release for Willock. Now finds Tolisso in a bit of space. Strikes it really well, but that's a good save from Jordan Pickford. Finally, the game is opening up, but it's the 90th minute, so it doesn't really matter all that much. I think we've done enough to win this game. And there you have it, guys. A very cagey affair against Everton, but Joe Willock's chip 
was enough to settle things for us as we beat Everton 1-0, a solid result. The Isaac Hayden transfer is yet to go through, so we're still waiting on getting some more cash. So until then, we'll play another Premier League game and after that, we'll go into the market to bring in another defender. We're up against Leicester next. They've been a difficult opponent. We face them in our first season in the FA Cup final. We beat them. Let's now play them in the Premier League and keep our good run of form going. The more games we can win, the better it is for our Premier League title hopes. This is Ferran Torres' moment. He's making his Newcastle debut in this one. And I cannot wait to see what kind of output he'll be providing to this team. We've spent over 50 million for him. We've broken our transfer record. And let's hope we can see what he's all about on the pitch. Nuno Tavares starts this game. Sean Longstaff as well. So a few changes here and there. We're up against the good Leicester team with Vardy, Barnes, Madison, Telemans and Didi. They've got a solid team. This is going to be a difficult game, but we've won two games in the Prem so far. Let's make it three. Now looks for Ferran Torres, and already we're seeing an impact here from Ferran Torres. A few step overs, brings it inside. Finds Sean Longstaff, goes for goal, blocked off. But already I'm seeing Ferran Torres with the willingness to bring the ball forward, get in behind and attack defenders. That's what you want to see. Good start from him. That's a good ball in behind for Jamie Vardy. I don't like this. And ah, oh, Jamie Vardy is having a party again. Nick Pope, I tried bringing him out to, you know, close the gap down, but it just didn't work. JB Vardy is way too clinical for all that. Solid finish, and Leicester City 1-0 up against us. Didn't expect this, guys. I, I thought we were having a good start to the game, but one counter, and Leicester City are through. And it was like an over-the-top through ball that broke us down. Frustrating. Find St. Maxman, who just about keeps himself on. I tried to find Tammy Abraham again, it didn't work. By the way, pressure's on Tammy Abraham. Third Premier League game into the season, and he's yet to score a single goal. That is worrisome because last season he was scoring goals for fun. Maybe it's all about getting that first goal with him and then goals will just come flying in. But we need to get that first goal soon with him then. Another chance here for Madison this time. I just cannot get the ball off Leicester. They're keeping the ball so well. We finally win that with Nuno Tavares. But, and he gives it away. How do you make mistakes like that, man? It was such an easy pass. And now Vardy. And Fabian Shah just walks right through him. Nothing is working for me in this one. Finally, it's Konde of all players who makes the challenge. But then Calvin Phillips gives it away and we've given them the space. I cannot believe this defending. Just atrocious. The way we just gifted them the goal. Unbelievable, man. Just goes to show we, we still have a long way to go in this series and we're not a complete team just yet. Calvin Phillips just completely messed things up and Conde just like stopped running there for a brief moment. I don't know what's going on. 2-0 down before halftime. This is not good. We're going to get beat at the King Power Stadium by the looks of things. Guys, this might be one of the most frustrating games of FIFA I have ever played. I legit cannot get the ball off Leicester City. It's, it's impossible to do anything against them. I think we've had like 30% possession in this game and they're just completely ripping me apart here. It's, it's embarrassing at this point. Like we just cannot do anything. And none of my forwards are doing anything in this game as well. I've seen barely any movement from Tammy Abraham. Barely anything from Joe Willock. Ferran Torres has been pretty tame as well. Finally, Abraham has broken through. But he's getting outclassed and outpaced by Rudiger. Which, I don't know what to do, man. It's, it's been a struggle. We've got 15 minutes left to try and get two goals. I don't think it's happening tonight. This has just not been our night. Jamie Vardy's about to score. And well, that's Jamie Vardy for you. Fantastic. At some point, I, I can't criticize... Leicester City they've just been truly phenomenal this is one of the most dominant performances I think I've seen against my team in this series because Leicester City were just unbelievable unplayable we barely had the ball in this game guys you know what I want to take a look at the possession stats because yep 40% possession in this game it's been a complete dominant Leicester performance their midfield has ripped us apart and Jamie Vardy up top clinical as ever we're 3-0 down. Questions need to be asked about Tammy Abraham, man. Because I feel like he's just standing up top doing nothing. Hat-trick from Jamie Vardy. He walks away with his fourth goal in the Premier League. Tammy Abraham so far, three games in the Prem and no goals. He needs to get his form from last season back. Because if he doesn't score up top, we're pretty average. And we need him to, you know, inspire the team. But a disappointing result for us. This is not the Tammy Abraham we're used to. I know he's picked up a couple of assists. But four games and zero goals... Nah, man, he needs to step things up. What is going on with Tammy Abraham right now? I don't know. But yeah, let's hope we can, you know, figure things out and start scoring soon because we need him to. A bit of good news, though, as Isaac Hayden has been sold to Villarreal for 11.4 million. I thought he was going to go to hurt the Berlin, but he decided to go to Villarreal. And that gives us about, let's say, 40 million to invest in a defender. 
yep that's what we're gonna do now i think we need a center back signing we've got the money to make it happen so let's do it now 40 million can get us a really good center back so i was looking at center back options guys and when i saw tomori available for a fairly decent price i just i couldn't say no i feel like this has to be the player we bring in now i know he's not the highest rated player but some of his stats 94 sprint speed he's gonna be so op in game 78 rated means that he definitely has room to grow and with Fabian Shah still being in his prime at his peak it makes sense for us to get a low rated defender and just slowly but surely develop him into a better player so when Fabian Shah starts dipping we can just slot Tamori in. I think that's the play and that's why I want to sign him. I don't think I've used him in any of my career modes so far so it just makes sense to make this happen a different player he's english as well let's bring him back to england to the premier league we might have to pay about 25 million but since we have the cash let's freaking do it i'm gonna start off being super cheap and offer 22 million for fikayo tomori let's see if juventus are willing to play with that they want sean longstaff nah man i don't want to give away sean longstaff let's propose new transfer fee and offer 23 million just a little bit more and see what they're willing to say 23 million wow they want 30.8 million with a sell-on clause let's offer what his valuation is that might you know smoothen things out for juve we'll keep the sell-on clause as well they want 30 million i feel like 30 million is way too much money for him man okay let's make it 27 27 and a half come on juve accept that 27 and a half now they're increasing it man oh this is so frustrating Okay, what about, let's just freaking pay 30 million and end it. 30 million, submit offer. Just accept it now for Tomori. Just accept it. There you go, that's done. I feel like I'm overpaying. But then again, when I look at Tomori's stats with that 94 sprint speed, you just know he's going to be absolutely OP in game. And if we train his defensive stats... He could be phenomenal as well. These are his contractual demands. We'll remove the appearance bonus, submit offer, and that should really smooth things out. Let's get the deal done. It's done. Tomori is now a Newcastle United player. It's been a fabulous window for us. We've signed the likes of Fafana, Tomori now. Of course, the major signing in Ferran Torres. And of course, Nuno Tavares. It's been a great freaking window for us, man. Like, honestly, look at the players we've brought in. I think we're ready for this season. For now, we're going to be simulating this one against West Brom. And let's hope we can get back to winning ways. That defeat to Leicester was painful. And it's a 3-0 win for us, which is awesome. Who scored the goals in the first half? Great to see Tammy Abraham get on the score sheet. St. Maximin as well. An injury to Jamal Lewis. Let's hope it's not too serious. Oh my god. Talking about an injury being not too serious. Jamal Lewis is out for the next five months with a broken tibia. <sighs> I was wondering when are we going to get the injury curse involved in this series. Because I remember the last career mode we did. How many injuries we had to deal with man. And now five months no Jamal Lewis. I am so glad we signed Nuno Tavares now. Because he's going to be vital for us in this series for the next you know five months so i was actually thinking with the injury to jamal lewis it kind of makes sense to you know maybe loan in the left back but i just realized we've exhausted our three transfers for this window um and nuno tavares counts as last season signing so we've exhausted it with torres tamori and fafana so yep we're gonna have to deal with the squad we have it's transfer deadline day i don't think we've got any more business to do we've got about 11 million left which we can use in the january window if needs be but apart from that I'm absolutely delighted with the team we've got here. It's, it's very capable. High overall players everywhere in the setup. Let's put Ferran Torres in here. And even Almiron on the bench. This, this team is capable, guys. We just need to hit a good stride, a good run of form. And I think we can do bits this season. So I'm very excited to see how things progress. This is our squad for this season. Time to get through one more Premier League game in this episode as we take on West Ham away from home. I hate the fact that they're playing with a five at the back formation, but we're just going to have to run with it. I'm giving Tomori his debut in this one, so super keen to see how he plays. Ferran Torres starts as well. Let's hopefully see a lot more of him in this one because, yeah, it's been underwhelming so far for him. Tammy Abraham needs some goals from him. Let's get a win here. Not gonna lie, in this episode, I haven't played the best of FIFA, man. Like, we just about scraped a win in that first game, and then we just got beat by Leicester City comprehensively. So, yeah, I really want to try and bounce back in this one and maybe get a big win. So, let's hope we can do exactly that. Toliso, St. Maximin, I don't know what to do. Ferran Torres, that's a cheeky pass for Max Ahrens, who is really pacing through. Looks back for Ferran Torres. 
cleverly done to find Tolisso. And now it's Joe Willock. St. Maximin in open space goes for goal and let's go. We've broken down the West Ham defence in unbelievable fashion. It was brilliant passing football. They've got a five at the back defence, so we needed to be precise with our passing. We were, and that's what gets us the first goal in this one. St. Maximin with the finish. Joe Willock with another assist. But look at that, a lovely finish there from St. Maximin. 1-0 up against West Ham. And now I see Abraham in space. This might be the moment we're waiting for to see Tammy Abraham get his first of the season. Goes for goal and that is what we've been waiting for. Tammy Abraham with a phenomenal strike. Feels like it's been a while since we've seen Tammy Abraham score. But it's a relief to see him score a goal like that. That's going to do wonders for his confidence. Not that I think he needs that confidence. Because last season we saw what Tammy Abraham is all about. A solid strike. We're doodled up against West Ham with that. Phillips now looks for Tammy Abraham. Once again, there's the roulette inside. Not the roulette. I was going to say the, the elastico, but whatever. It worked brilliantly. The elastico from Tammy Abraham to open up space was perfect. And then the finish, I told you, man, he scores one. He's then going to just be unstoppable in front of goal because that's the kind of player he is. I think we're finding Tammy Abraham's mojo back in season three. And there you go, guys. We're 3-0 up against West Ham, and that should settle this game. See St. Maximin, and here we go on the breakthrough. St. Maximin could cross this one for Tammy Abraham. Does so successfully. Tammy on the volley. And I told you, man, he scores one. It's just going to be a goal machine from then on. Tammy Abraham with another hat-trick in this series. I've lost count how many times he's actually scored hat-tricks for us, because it is absurdly good. St. Maximin scooping this one in. Tammy Abraham with the finish. 4-0 against West Ham, we've completely obliterated them. We're 4-0 up, I've made some changes and it the game. We're 4-0 up, I've made some changes to preserve stamina on my players. The game's done, I'm just gonna jump to result. There's nothing surprising that's gonna happen here. The game finishes 4-0. There you go, solid result for us. Look at that guys, we don't have quite the perfect record in the Premier League, but we're in the top four already. Four wins out of five with 12 points. Liverpool though look like the team to beat in the Premier League. They've got a perfect record so far. But what a start to our Prem season. Next episode, you know what's coming. The Champions League group reveal. We're going to be playing our first few group stage games as well. I simply cannot wait for this. Also, you guys are going to find out a bit about what's going to happen with the sponsors and the objectives. And also stay tuned for that. But before that, player of the episode. It's a tricky one because although Tammy Abraham scored a hat-trick, I don't think it was particularly insane or so. Willick had a solid episode as well. I thought Conde defensively was just monstrous in this one, so it's a tough one. I'm leaning towards Conde, but then again, when you score a hat-trick, it's difficult to not include you. Let me know in the comments section who you think deserves to win player of the episode. With that, guys, this is where we're wrapping up today's episode of the Newcastle career mode. I mean, a lot happened in this one, you know, signing Ferran Torres, breaking our transfer record for him, signing to Mori. A lot happened. And next episode, the drama is going to continue with the Champions League. If you are enjoying this series, keep the support coming in by dropping a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new around here and I'll catch you all next time.